I will show you the power of darkness.
the results of the arena loop. I did 15, I used 15 rubies and for arena swords. And yeah, win count 16, lose 3. So, wow, that's a very good win lose ratio. So, yeah, I guess we can all safely say that this team has been quite a success. And so, as for the, um, uh, discussion about my team, I guess what my equipments are and all that anyway let's go uh we've got awakening Chris here uh awakened Chris uh, rather and so of course i have uh, two speed and two counter on him and in case you're wondering why i have such high hp on him despite you know not having hp armor i have full limit break on him as you can see here yep and as for accessories i've got Guardian's Ring here with 3, Void Shield, and Death as a substat, of course, staple. And as for Jewels, Counter and Block Rate, Self Explanatory, to increase chances of countering to apply that debuff, Block Rate, increase survivability. Especially since he has this passive with him that uh, the damage received will not exceed 20% of max HP, so there's a certain ceiling as to how much damage Chris can take so having a block chance can quite help in helping him survive more and of course recovery skill for his passive that uh, gives allies uh, that heals allies HP uh, whenever enemies die so recovery skill helps out in making the whole team survive a lot longer so of course as for the awakening skill We've got resets all school, all skill cooldowns, so that's great. Especially for Chris, since you know he's pretty much literally the god of death. He gotta apply all those dead debuffs, so revives all allies for three turns. So that pretty much uh, makes Karin awakened Karin obsolete in tank teams because um, some tank teams situationally use Karin because of her mainly because of her revive but since Chris now has this kind of uh, effect on his awakening skill Karen's awakening skill is not much needed anymore and you know Karen uh, Karen's only purpose of course is you know to revive and since that role has been taken by, by Chris already I think that she's not needed anymore so next is with Whisper of Darkness, pre-awakening this skill is um, the 3 hit skill of Chris, but now it hits all enemies 2 times, uh, which results to 160% physical damage in general, of course applies that debuff and additionally also applies 2000 fixed damage, so that can hurt quite a bit. And as for Strike of Darkness pre-awakening, this was only a single target skill, but now it's um, it targets three enemies two times for a total of 200% physical damage. Of course, still applies phys uh, that debuff, and additionally applies another that debuff on top of that. So there's a chance that whenever Strike of Darkness hits, there's a chance that it will apply that debuff twice, resulting to insta death. So yeah. And it targets three, so you have you know a chance of removing three enemies from the enemy team, assuming that they don't have uh, CC immunity or rather debuff immunity, of course. But knowing tank team, the tank team has lots of uh, debuff immunity removal skills. So anyway, next would be Soul Drain. Yeah, I mentioned the first effect already. Revives once for 4 turns. If I remember correctly, pre-awakening, Chris only revives for 3 turns. So, I'm I'm not sure if, if I'm correct with that. But still, 4 turns is quite helpful because you can... Uh, Chris won't die from, you know, buff... Uh, re buff reduce duration... Buff duration reduce skills. Uh, immediately because the highest that we have at the moment is for uh, three turns I think so Chris would 
still have one more turn to do something before he actually dies, and of course applies that debuff on each basic attack. And since we have um, also death on my accessory here, we have a chance to insta death with just one basic attack. So yeah, of course, that's a staple for Chris, death everywhere. And as for the rest, yeah, they're pretty much staple tank team units. But let's look at our my spear is like the wind. I've got two speeds here for Carl, Carl Heron, two max HP, although it's not fully awakened yet or fully equipped. And as for accessory, this is only a placeholder because I don't have enough Guardian's Ring at the moment, or rather enough Tartarus Star Points to purchase another Guardian's Ring. I plan to add in another Guardian's Ring for Carl Heron here. As for substat, probably death as well. As for um, jewels here, lethal, block weight, counter rate. So we've got el what else? Uh, Rook. I've got Guardian String on him because, uh, especially since he's, uh, he's at the front, so he needs that additional survivability. And I don't have. I pro I'll probably add a another death debuff down there on that substat in the future. Once I have the resources, I have two speed attacks on him and also two max HP. So, yeah. Next, I've got Elysia, and instead of using HP on her, I used Counter Rate as a substitute to Chris. Because, you know, uh, for some reason, uh, although you have a high chance of counter, a uh, high percentage of counter rate, sometimes it doesn't activate. For example, for Chris. So we've got Elysia here as a uh, substitute counter attacker in case, in case, in the rare, rare case that Chris doesn't counter attack. And as for her substat, I also have death on her. So, you know, she also has a, has a chance to apply that debuff on enemies. So speed attack, of course. And yeah, of course, since I have two counter attackers in the team, I, uh, Chris has the priority, of course, so he has higher counter attack percentage in general compared to Alicia. That's why I'm using only 7k counter armor on her compared to Chris, um, uh, raid counter armor. So, next, um, jewel, we've got counter as well, damage, and block rate. And yeah, uh, you won't be needing much HP on Elysia mainly because one, we're on a tank team, we're already tanky in general. And two, she has innate survivability because she has immunity to all damage for four turns. So the only thing that would hit her would be either debuffs like burns or something like that or maybe uh, piercing attacks. But even if that hits, we've got damage received is higher than the current HP, survives at 1 HP. So she can survive for quite a while and at the same time, we've got this one here to heal her up just in case or rather <laughs> never mind that was a uh, I remember the skill wrongly we've got summons from Terra here as well to you know make her immune to two more damage so that's helpful and you lastly uh, awaken Nox here to HP as usual to lethal rate because we need him to either use Hellwave first for enemies that have Elysia or Spike on their team or maybe deadly gaze for you know uh, for enemies that have Amelia, Chloe or Amelia, Chloe or um, Miho to reduce their debuff immunity count so yeah as for his um, uh, accessory I've got Electrify here and lethal rate a substat although personally I'd like to use another guardian string on him then probably a death substat for pure death team but yeah I don't have the resources for that at the moment but this uh, this accessory does its job so that's all right as for my jewels counter rate lifesteal and lethal rate as for my pet here I've got three five star three to help out with you know applying that debuff and at the same time reduce the skill cooldown of our units here and lastly as for my formation I have 4-1 here offensive 
and as you can see i don't have i haven't maxed it yet because as you can see i only have 92k gold yeah it's kind of hard to farm up gold especially since the lack of keys because of exploration because of farming for rubies i can't always farm up on world date because i don't have you know the luxury of so many fathers and yeah as for the buff settings i increased the debuff cast rate of the backline so yeah i don't need you know rook to apply that much debuff well maybe his awakening skill but that's not even guaranteed to you know uh to be used of that often compared to um uh, chris or either Knox using their death related skills so yeah i guess that's that and as you can see um from the start of the arena i was 4380 i think and i uh went up to 4588 so that was quite a lot and honestly i'm also quite surprised and yeah i really like this team I re uh even before then i really like uh death team even uh, um you know before even Knox and chancellor was awakened because back then there was a team involving chris and espada for the death team so yeah anyway i guess that's that for now i hope you got uh this you know testing out awakening chris video help you out and all that and yeah i'm not sure if this is going to be the final setup for the optimal death tank team but for now i'm quite satisfied with it oh i also forgot to mention the masteries of course so the first page here all down second page i've got level 50 on up because uh whoops as you can see we've got block rate of enemies we don't need to reduce the enemy's block rate because we're gonna be killing them with death so we're gonna reduce the enemy's crit rate to help out the team our team survivability next is decrease the defense of l enemies or of course we, we don't need that because of uh we're gonna be killing them with death so instead we're gonna be reducing reducing their physical and magic damage to help out with survivability again so third page all down so yeah that's pretty much it so yeah i guess that's that i hope this guys uh this video help you out guys if you like the video do like it comment for your comments suggestions criticisms or whatever and hopefully you subscribe as well so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next episode